let's suppose that we want to find the launch velocity of a ball launcher. So we use these things in lab, and they're little um, devices that shoot out a ball. And you can measure the angle, and you can put it on different settings, but you want to know how fast that ball is coming out of this thing. Okay, so I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways to find this. Uh, let's give a go over a quick review of projectile motion. So pro we consider projectile motion any time you have a ball or an object in the air. And the only force on it is the downward gravitational force. That's the only force acting on it. Now, there could be an air resistance force, um, but we're going to have to consider that negligible or it's not projectile motion. Also, there is a force pushing on the ball to launch it, and there is a force when it enter hits the ground, and that's not projectile motion. So projectile motion starts right when it leaves the launcher and ends right before it hits the ground. So it's only that time like that. So if I use this single force, and I'll call this the x direction and this the y direction, then I can say f net, that's a net, and the x direction is zero, right? There's no net force in the x direction, only points in the y direction. So that means mass times acceleration in the x direction is zero, or the x acceleration is zero meters per second squared. Uh, the y force, f net, y, now this is the y component of the force. That's in the negative y direction, so it's going to be the scalar negative mg, and that's going to equal uh, mass times acceleration in the y direction. The masses cancel, which is awesome, right? Kind of crazy. And so I get the acceleration in the y direction is negative g. So we say g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Don't say negative g. It's not negative, okay? Um, this marker is bad. <clears throat> the negative uh, is the y component, but g itself is just the, the magnitude of that gravitational field. So don't put negative there. Um, so with this, we get uh, the following two kinematic, or the following two situations. When you shoot a ball, uh, because the x acceleration, which is zero, does not depend on anything with y, there's no y's in this equation, and because there's no x's in this equation, then we have two separate one-dimensional motions. So we have a ball moving at a constant speed in the x direction. We could draw that. Let me draw uh, just like these. So it's just moving, this is every second it moves a certain distance, same distance. And in the y direction, we have uh, an accelerating ball. So it moves down like that. It speeds up. And so we can treat those two problems as two separate problems. And the only thing they have in common is time. So I can say in the x direction, I have the following one-dimensional problem. Really, I only have one equation. It's this. Well, I have two. x equals x0 plus vx0 t, that's it, right? Because the acceleration in the x direction is zero, so there's no term there. I could also say this, vx equals vx0, but that's not that useful. Now, I do have to say one more thing. I guess I should point this out. If you launch at some angle theta with some velocity v0, well, then I can find the x velocity is the uh, adjacent component. The y velocity is the, horse, the vertical component. So that means that vx0 is v0 cosine theta. vy0 is v0 sine theta. And that's assuming you measure the angle from the horizontal axis. So this is my launch velocity, total velocity, and that's my launch angle. Okay, and we're going to get to that in a second. So that's that. Then in the y motion, I have the following. So I have a similar equation, y. This is, when I say x, it's the final x. And when I say y, that's the final y, because it's, it's a function of time. It's going to be equal to the initial y position plus the initial y velocity times time uh, minus 1 half g t squared. This is just that kinematic equation that we see a lot. We can also write the other uh, important equation, which is vy equals vy initial minus gt. That's the constant acceleration in the y direction. So if I use this to solve for time, I can plug it in down here. Or I could use this to solve for time and plug it in up here. Of course, there is one other y equation that comes up, and I'll go ahead and tell it to you. It's this, vy squared 
is v y initial squared minus 2 g y final minus y initial. That's one of those other kinematic equations. And, but that doesn't have time in it, right? So, okay, let's get to it and use these to, to find the launch velocity. Uh, I'm gonna go over a bunch of different ways. And yes, that was a very quick review of projectile motion. Um, don't expect to understand everything from that. Let's, this is the way that I find a lot of students like to find the projectile motion. Um, so first of all, what can we measure? If I shoot this horizontally, and, and I'll tell you right now, Either shoot it horizontally or vertically. Don't put it at some angle when you're trying to find the launch speed, unless you just like to make things more difficult. Okay, so I can measure the initial height above the ground. Um, I can measure uh, the distance it travels. We'll call that um, S. No, X final. Uh, and I can measure delta T. Okay, so the height above the ground, you can just use a meter stick and measure the height above the ground. This distance, how far it travels horizontally, we have uh, carbon paper. And so you put a piece of, of paper on the ground like this, and then you put a piece of carbon paper over it. And when the, when the ball hits the carbon paper, it leaves a dot, and then you can measure to that dot. And I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that. Um, but that's one, so you can measure that distance fairly easily. That's pretty easy. And this, you just use a stopwatch, okay? Um, yes, this thing goes fairly fast, so that's really difficult, and that's going to include a problem with your uncertainty. But that's the time interval to go from here to there. So let's use that first method. So if I look at the X motion, uh, let's first look at this. If this is my launch velocity V0, then VY0 is equal to 0. VX0 is equal to V0, right? Because I'm launching with a theta of 0. So if I multiply by a sine of zero, I get zero, so, cosine of zero gives one. So I get uh, the initial velocity is only in the x direction. So this is my initial velocity right here. So if I find the x velocity, that is the launch velocity. So in the x motion, I can say x final, I'm going to use x final, is x initial plus v x initial times t, which is delta t in this case. So if we put this point right here is my x equals zero, then this actually becomes x final equals uh, v, I'm gonna just call it v zero, delta t. So I can calculate v zero is x final over delta t, because I've subtracted off zero, I'll put that right there. So that means I measure this distance, and then I shoot it, no, actually I shoot it and measure the time, and then I record where it hit, and then I'm just doing the change in position over the change in time because that's only my x direction. I don't really care about the y direction. And yes, this would be the problem right here that delta t is has a fairly large uncertainty. You could do this 10 times and see how that changes uh, with your reaction time on the stopwatch. It'd be kind of fun. Okay, let's look at another method. Again, I want to shoot this horizontally, but I don't want to measure that time. Um, because it's really difficult to do. So instead, I'm going to measure this height and this uh, distance. So if I do that, uh, again, I can say x motion. It's going to be x final equals 0 plus v0, and I'm just going to call it t. I'm going to start at t equals 0. So I don't have to use delta t. I can just use t. That's my x motion equation. If I knew the time, I could solve for v0. So let's look at the y motion. What do I know about the y motion? Well, in the y motion, I, I know if I put this as my origin, then y initial is h, y final is 0. So with that, I get the following kinematic equation. y final equals y0 plus, I'll write it out, vy0t minus 1 half gt squared. That's my kinematic equation. But there's some zeros in here, right? The final y is 0. The initial y velocity is 0, right? Because I, shoot it, I shot it horizontally. So that gives me 0 equals, uh, and y0 is h. So h minus 1 half g t squared. I can solve this for t. So let's add this to both sides. I get 1 half g t squared equals h. I'm going to multiply by 2 and divide by g, and I get 
t squared equals 2h over g, and then t is going to be equal to the square root of 2h over g. That's the time. I can find the time it takes to hit the ground without measuring the time. I can just use this. And now I can take this and plug it in up there. So if I solve this for v0, I get v0 equals xf over t. And then if I use this for t, I get xf divided by this, which is going to be the square root of g over 2h. And that's one way to get the velocity. So that's the second way. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at another way to get the velocity. There's a whole bunch. And it's fun to look at these different situations and see how they work and see which one gives the best velocity with the smallest uncertainty. So let's say I launch the, velo the ball straight up. So it goes straight up and back down. And I'm going to call this y equals 0. So it starts at y equals 0. Uh, of course, in this case, nothing happens in the x direction. I don't need to write about anything in the x direction. Nothing happens. Starts at x equals 0, ends at x equals 0. The x velocity is 0. So my x motion would be, I'll write it out, x motion would be uh, x final equals x initial plus vx initial t. So that's 0 equals 0 plus 0 times t. Boring. Okay. But in the y motion, let's do this. Let's say at the highest point, if the ball is going up, and then it comes back down, then at the highest point, v final is zero meters per second. It has to stop in order to come back down. So let's say I record this, dis this distance the of the highest point. So I'm going from here at a v zero up to here at the highest point. I'm measuring the height. Now, that's kind of hard to do because you're going to have to look at it as it shot up and kind of approximate it, but you can get a value for that. So in that case, I could say uh, <clears throat> v final squared equals v, and I'm sorry, I should say y. v final y squared equals v initial y squared minus 2g y final minus y initial. So my y final is h, my y initial is 0, my y final is 0. So I get 0 equals v, and the y velocity is v0, right, because it's, it's theta is 90 degrees. So I have v0 squared minus 2g, and that's my final height. It's going to be h. So now I want to solve for v0. I'm going to add that to both sides. I get v0 squared equals 2gh. v0 equals the square root of 2gh. You know, you can just check the units here. A g is in newtons per kilogram, also meters per second squared. So I get meters per second squared times meters. That gives me meters squared per second squared. When I take the square root, I get meters per second. So that's good. Okay, and again, this is nice because you only have one thing that you have an uncertainty in, and that's that height. But it is, there is a large uncertainty in there. What if instead of that, I want to measure the time it takes to get to the highest point? So in that case, I could say, uh, let's say uh, t equals, I measure that with the stopwatch. Um, now I could say v y final equals v y initial minus g t. That's my, my constant acceleration uh, problem. And if I measure t, my initial velocity is what I want to find. My final velocity is 0. So I get 0 equals v 0, right, because it's shot in the, in the vertical direction, minus g t. I measure that time. So v 0 equals g t. And again, here I have meters per second squared times seconds. It gives me meters per second. But that time is really difficult to get. Well, what if instead I get the time to go up and back down, the total time? So when it gets back down here, this is a little trick. Um, <clears throat> but because of symmetry, the final velocity would be negative v0. So if I do that same thing, I can use this equation right here, and I get v the final velocity is going to be negative v0, and that's the initial velocity v0 minus g. This is just up. Minus gt. And now I can solve, if I, um, let's add this to both sides. I get 2v0, so I get 2v0 equals gt. 
Uh, so V0 would be G T over two. And this is up and down. Okay, so one, two, that's five different ways to measure the launch velocity. And that's fun. Okay, let me show you uh, the second part that what we're gonna do because uh, it's kind of fun. And I'm not gonna solve this for you, I'm just gonna set it up for you. So the idea is once you know that launch velocity, I can say, okay, if I take my velocity and launch it at some angle now, where is it gonna land? And I'm not launching it from the floor, I'm launching it above that. So uh, there's a little ball marker there, that's the height, the H, we'll call that. And we wanna find X, we wanna find X final. So in this case, I'm gonna say uh, for the X motion, let's call this uh, X, my origin right there. So X motion, I have X initial is zero, VX initial, the x velocity is going to be, now I'm launching it at an angle. So this is going to be v0, which I just found, hopefully, times the cosine of theta. And then I want to solve for x final. That would be equal to x0 plus vx0 times t. But I don't know the time. I don't know the time, it's how long it's going to be in the air. So now I need to go over to the y motion. y motion. And so in this case, I know the initial y is h, the final y is zero, right? It's gonna land on the ground. The initial y velocity is gonna be equal to v zero sine theta. And then I have the following equation, y final equals y initial plus v y initial t minus one half g t squared. So in this case, let's plug in the things we know. I know the final y is zero my initial y is h plus, I'll just leave this as v0, y0, although we can find it, it's a number, plus v, y0, t minus one half g t squared. So how do you solve this for time? If I know that's a number, I know that's a number, and that's a number, 9.8 times one half, I know those numbers. But I have a t squared, a t, a t, a t squared, and a constant term. Well, this says use a quadratic equation. So remember, if I have uh, a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero, then x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four a c all over two a. So now in this case, I actually have <clears throat> t and this would be c, this is b and this is a and then plug those in up here, oh, and solve for time. And then take that time and plug it in over here. And I'm not gonna do that, uh, but I, that's how you would do it. Okay, hope that helps.